Hello ladies and gents, welcome to another repair video. Today we're going to be taking a look at this PlayStation 4 which has been sent in. This is the PS4 Slim and this particular console has been sent in because it has a broken Ethernet port. So the Ethernet is obviously used for a wired internet connection and a lot of people do prefer to game using a wired connection either because they don't have Wi-Fi Maybe they are in a shared accommodation and they've only got an Ethernet port in their personal space. And others prefer it for latency reasons and just overall to get a better quality connection. So if we take a look on the back of the port, back of the console here, we can see that it is visibly damaged. And I'm going to try and see what happens when I try and plug an Ethernet cable in. So I've got myself a cable here. And... It's supposed to go that way, and as you can see there, it's it's not clipping in, it's not locking in at all. So that's going to have issues making a connection with the actual pins inside as well. So we're going to need to get that replaced. This is a job that I've never come across before, but obviously, just like any other port, it's still going to break if too much force has been put on it. So we don't need to turn it on or anything, we can visibly see that the port is broken. So let's just get it apart and we'll replace that port and then we'll see if it fixes the issue and connects to the internet afterwards. Okay, and it's quite dusty inside as well, so it's going to need a bit of a service, but that gets done while we're disassembling. I always feel it's important to clean out the console when we're disassembling it just to basically give the user a better gaming experience and it's good for customer relations to give it a free service as well. While I've got your attention don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. It does help out a bunch. Okay. So we're going to need to remove this T9 as well. Let's pop that to one side. Um, while we've got the Torx bit, we might as well take out the black screw as well. So the good news is this console has never been messed with. The warranty sticker is still perfectly intact, so we're going to be the first ones inside. Always nice to see. It's very rare that we get that luxury these days. And uh, actually, maybe not. I think that might have been taken apart before. Felt a little bit loose to come off there. But that's fine. Okay. So one thing I should point out is that the screw that holds in the Wi-Fi antenna is different to the rest of the screws. So make sure that we keep that safe and don't get it mixed up with the rest of them because it is slightly smaller. I do actually have a PS4 slim screw just here and if we take a look at the size difference they are they are slightly smaller so just keep that safe that's a that's a spare screw that one's the customers so just keep that safe keep it away from the rest of them just so you don't get mixed up because you will cause damage to the plastic if you put one of the longer ones in so it's always best to just keep it separate got a few dust bunnies in here Okay, one thing to note is always make sure that you take the thermal pads and stick them to the metal chassis. Reason being is because I've seen a few consoles where there's been damage to the RAM because of missing thermal pads recently. So always make sure that we collect those up, especially if we're the first ones in here. We don't want to leave the console back together without those. So I always like to just collect those up and put them onto the metal frame. It just makes it easier and saves us from losing them later on. And there we go. Okay, so let's just pop the rest of the console to one side for a minute. All we're going to be focusing on right now is the motherboard itself. 
and we'll give the rest of the console a clean when we're ready to reassemble. I'll just get rid of the old thermal paste off there and also I'm going to brush the motherboard down just so I don't get dust everywhere all over my hands and things. Okay so if we take a look at the port itself then we can clearly see that it's damaged. We've got some broken plastic just here. So what we're going to need to do then is we're going to need to get this port off, get one off a donor board without damaging it and replace it. So I'm going to start first of all by replacing the solder that's on here with leaded solder. You can use low melt as well and in fact it's probably recommended however I don't generally use it. I generally just use normal leaded solder. Okay so I'm going to start by replacing all of the points with leaded solder then. So I'll just let the soldering iron do most of the work, leave it to transfer the heat. Okay. So you can see here that I've replaced the solder on the main four legs. And let's just flow the solder a bit, bit better on these pads here. And there we go. Okay. So let's flip the board around then. And I'm going to replace the solder that's on the back here as well. So I'm going to get some more flux. And then I'm just going to fill these legs with leaded solder. Okay. Right, so now what I want to do is I want to heat up from the bottom. So I'm going to use some hot air. And I'm going to heat up from the bottom. And that's going to allow me to drop this port out. And it's going to allow me to replace it with a new one. So I'm going to get some hot air. I'm going to set my hot air to 480 degrees Celsius and my airflow to 50%. And I'm just going to start adding some heat to the board. Okay, so now that the board has warmed up a little, and I didn't even need to do that, it just dropped out. I was, I was going to tap it, but... I didn't even need to do that because it just dropped out. Perfect. Okay, so that's the old port gone. So what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to clean up that area. I'm going to clean up the, the ground holes and also clean up the pads on the back. Put some fresh solder on the back pads and then we can take a port off a donor board and drop it onto this one. Okay, so let's just add some flux. So I did notice that quite a lot of that solder spilled out onto the ground plane. That's not too much of a big deal. I can just clean that up while I'm cleaning the rest of it. Shouldn't be too much of an issue. So I'm going to use some soldering wick. i use goot wick. It's really nice and cheap and it does the job fantastically. Okay, let's add a little bit more flux here. And there we go, those holes are cleaned out perfectly. Okay, so let's clean up the other end. There we go. So now I'm going to use some isopropyl alcohol and a cotton swab. Just get rid of the burnt flux on the board. And let's flip it over, let's clean the other side. And I tinned these earlier, thinking that these was the legs for the pins themselves, and there wasn't, so you don't need to do that. So uh, 
That was my mistake. Uh, like I said, I've never changed one of these before, so I wasn't 100% sure on what pins I needed to clean up and things. Um, but you learn as you go sometimes. Sometimes you're going to be faced with a job that you've never done before. And this is probably the, one of the only times I'll do this job, to be honest. Okay. Right, so... What I'm going to do then is I'm going to tin these legs like I would any other port. So I'm going to just pre-tin them, put some solder on there ready to accept a new port. And the reason for that is because then when I drop the port on I can just tap the legs on the port itself and it should just solder straight into place. So I'll get some leaded solder and I'm just going to run the soldering iron across and that's it. We don't want to put any solder inside the ground holes, we want to keep them free so we can just drop a new port on. But if we take a look here now, you'll see that all of those legs there are nicely tinned and ready to accept a new port. Right, so I'm going to grab myself a donor board here, and this donor board, as you can see, the only port I've got left on this side is, of course, the Ethernet port. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same with what I did just, and that is to add some leaded solder to the legs. But this time, instead of using hot air, I'm going to try and do it without by using just wick on its own. And I'm going to try and wick away at the pads and see if I can remove it that way. So let's add some flux. So if you're interested, I'll use Kingbow RMA218. I actually bought it in 100 gram tubs. Uh, it's, a, it's only about I think, I think I paid £9.99 for this 100 gram tub and then I'll just put it into the tub myself uh, using a scoop into the syringe. Uh, but you can get it a lot cheaper on AliExpress. I am waiting for another tub from AliExpress to turn up. But Kingbow, in my opinion, is excellent value for money. Okay. So now I'm going to try and wick away at these ground legs. Just see if I can remove the solder without having to use hot air. If I can't, I can use a bit of hot air. It's not a big deal if the plastic melts a little bit. But I'd rather not use hot air. Right, that looks clean enough on that side. So let's try this one. Okay, I may need to use a little bit of hot air. So I'm going to keep the board on a bit of an angle, so as there's still a little bit of room underneath for the port to drop. And let's just start adding hot air. So I'll start by heating up this back area here where the port, where the legs actually are. And there we go. So I'm going to let that port cool down. I'll get this board out of the way. But what I do want to do is just clean up these legs a little bit. Just add some fresh solder to them. Okay. So that looks like it came off fairly clean. Not too much singeing there on the port itself. I'm going to let it cool down for another minute or two. It is still very hot. So I'll leave that to cool down for a second and then we'll get it we'll get it replaced. We'll get it put onto the board. Okay, so that should have cooled down sufficiently now. So let's just see if we can drop this in. It should just fall straight into place. Um, we're going to have to add a little bit of heat. So I'm going to put the board up on an angle. And just try and keep it in place. There we go. Uh, let's just try and add some heat to the side legs. OK, 
Okay, so it's almost in. Okay, let's take a look at that, shall we? That seems to be in line. There is a little bit of singeing to this area just here, but that shouldn't be a problem. It's just a plastic cover. Let's just add some flux there. And then I'm going to reflow these joints just to clean them up. This is very tight inside here. Okay, let's flip the board around. And that looks absolutely fine. So let's just solder the back legs on then. So just leave the soldering iron there for a few minutes, just to, or for a few seconds, just to let the solder penetrate the hole. That seems absolutely perfect. So I'm going to use some isopropyl alcohol and a cotton swab and just clean up like we normally would. Try and get as much flux and stuff as, as we can off the board. Okay, let's flip it around. And let's just clean up this area as well. And now what I want to do is just get rid of any crap left behind by the tweezers or by the cotton swabs and then I'm going to use the tweezers to give it a nudge test and make sure that all of these pins are nicely soldered. Perfect. So what I want to do, I've got to clean up the rest of the console so I've got to take the rest of the console apart and make sure that it's nice and clean but what I do want to do first is just Make sure that it's properly aligned and make sure that when I put this back together we're not going to have any issues with it being out of alignment. So let's do that just by dropping the board in. So that would be how the board sits. And that is absolutely perfect. So once that's screwed down and everything's tight, it's absolutely perfect. Perfect alignment. Good. That's brilliant. That went a lot better than I thought it would. So let's move the board back out of the way. I'm going to clean up. I'll fast forward through this bit. Just clean out the fan and the heatsink. And make sure that everything, everything's nice and clean for the customer. Right, okay, so just time to put everything back together now. So we're going to start off by installing the fan. And I'll fast forward through the reassembly process. Perfect. Beautiful. Okay, so remember that little screw we mentioned earlier? Because I know where it is. I don't have to hunt for it. There we go. Beautiful.
and that is that so as we can see now we've got it screwed in perfectly aligned beautiful right so let's give this a test then shall we like i said i have never changed an ethernet port on a ps4 or a ps4 or an xbox actually so let's give it a whirl let's see what happens turn it on okay let's switch to the camera app on my computer and there we go so that's booted straight into the operating system perfect so let's plug in a HDMI uh, sorry I'm used to saying HDMI there let's plug in an Ethernet lead and that locks in beautifully perfect okay so this Ethernet lead is connected up to my router so let's just sync up a controller and see if we get controller sync and we do perfect do we get wireless controller I think my batteries are uh, oh maybe not just went off huh okay let's go to the network and set up the internet connection let's use a LAN cable easy internet settings updated beautiful perfect absolutely perfect right okay let's test a few other things so let's clear those and there's a slight, blo slight bug in the latest software when you press on the ethernet it doesn't pick up properly it doesn't actually uh, select it first time you have to wait a few seconds right so Let's just test a few other things. So the password for the Wi-Fi is subscribe. There is a bit of a subliminal message in there somewhere. Let's test the connection. And if we take a look just here, you can see there is, of course, a subliminal message there. So you really need to pay attention to that message. It is very, very important and it really helps out the channel a bunch. Okay, anyway, let's go back. Actually, let's stay on settings for a second. Let's go to sound and screen. Let's make sure that we're connected to 1080p and 720p. Yeah, 480p. Yeah back to 1080p and automatic perfect okay let's test the disk drive and apparently street fighter 5 is in there so let's see if it plays drive is spinning up i thought it went off for a second there but it's not it's just loading um yeah there we go excellent Right, okay, so let's just shut this down now. There we go. Absolutely perfect. Right, so that is pretty much it for this video. So let's just summarise then. This console was sent in because it had a broken Ethernet port. When we tried to connect up an Ethernet to the PlayStation 4, of course, it wasn't staying in because it was obviously broken. And if you take a look at that there, it doesn't actually lock in to the port itself. So by taking a port from a donor board and by soldering it onto the PS4 that we're working on, we're able to restore that connection and the owner can game with less latency once again. Okay, so that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And if you want to see more repair videos, be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications so that you're notified every time that I upload. I also now have channel members where channel members get early access to my videos. And for as little as £1.99 per month, you can help support the channel. I'm also over on Patreon as well. You can go over to Patreon and check me out over there. But other than that, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, see you later. Bye for now.